12 tricks from my journey to learn how to do dovetails. So I've been making these dovetails for a couple of weeks. Uh, I've made some in the past, but never have been happy with the results. I have too many gaps. And here you can see a pile of uh, different dovetails that I've experimented with, trying to refine my skills. You can still see gaps in a lot of them. Here's whenever I started making 40 cuts a day trying to perfect my sawing, different kinds of wood, mostly poplar, but some cherry and some maple. You can see mistakes I've made with chisels and knives, and you can even see. Um, I've come a long ways, but I'm still not perfect. Here's one where I timed myself, and uh, you could see that uh, the layout and the two times whenever I was cleaning things up with the chisels took the longest, so it's best to get it off the saw. There's a good one. So let me share some of my tips with you, uh, things that I've found to be useful. The first one is that I like to use my bevel gauge, and uh, I find it really tedious to set my protractor uh, to my angle uh, perfectly. Uh, if I do, I can set my bevel gauge pretty quick like that, but it's very tedious, so I made this little jig so I can lay my bevel gauge in here. I've got a variety of different angles. I've got 10, 7, 8, 9, uh, 12, 14, 15, something like that. Well, let's me uh, set that. Here's another one. This is setting uh, 11 or 12 on the other side. I just glued these little pieces of wood onto this board uh, carefully took a long time but because I had to let each one of them dry. Here I, I added a couple of little stops so that I can set up my, uh, my sharpening equipment to have the right amount of extension for different angles. The next tip is about having a consistent sawing angle. So I made a visual aid for that. Because you know it's always hard to line up and stay lined up is the harder part. Anyway we had this in our craft box and I figured out that uh, if I laid it behind the piece and set it with the bevel gauge, and then I took some weight, put it on there so it doesn't jump around. Then I've got a reference that I can line my saw up on. Here I'm a little bit crooked, but I'm just trying to get started at first. Once I get started, I can line myself up, especially if you point it way out there far, you can really get uh, some precision in it. You begin to establish the pattern so that you can uh, cut exactly on the proper angle. Now, you want to check that, and you've got a thin ruler. Here's an antique ruler that I've got that I really like, a Lufkin 66. If you stick it in that slot and it's the same size as your kerf, you can check that against your gauge. Another problem is sawing plumb uh, straight up and down. So I was looking for another way to be able to deal with that, and I took a dowel and put a magnet on the end and epoxied a spirit guide or spirit bubble on it. I can use that for leveling up the piece in the vise, and then I can stick it onto the side of the, the saw. And then, once I figure out my angle, and I begin to make my cut, I can just look over at that bubble and see if it's in the middle. Now, it does break up whenever you're moving, but what you do is you move a little bit and you stop, see how you're doing, you adjust, adjust, adjust. Looks like I'm missing my angle there, but in any case, you can saw more close to vertical with this little spirit bubble. Another thing I had a problem with was that I would damage the baseline with my fret saw, and uh, that really bothered me. First of all, I put this sign on my saw that says, uh, I always cut into the waist. Uh, this is a piece of cherry. It's pretty hard, and if I... Uh, clamp my, my work in there and then tap around on it so that the uh, cherry is above the baseline, but really close. Then I can drop my fret saw into there, and then I can guide the uh, fret saw along the top of that guide, and uh, that way I can stay pretty close to the baseline without damaging it. So you can see, you can leave just a small amount of material, and the less material you leave, then the quicker it is to do your chiseling. 
I did make an alignment board like uh, David Barron has for lining up my tails and pins, but I found another use for it. If I clamp another board in here, and by the way, it's the same board I'm using for the other purpose, then I've got a little area that I can jam into while I'm chiseling and uh, push up against, and it's easier than working out on the bench. If you want to chisel plumb, that's not so easy, at least it wasn't for me. What I discovered is that I can take a magnet, put it on the back side of my chisel, and then take a steel machinist uh, square, put my uh, chisel into the baseline. Now this is after you've got down to very small material left. And then I can know exactly what 90 degree is. See, it'll even hold the chisel up there by itself. You still have to start off very gently with some very small taps. Once you get registered, you can go a little bit more. But notice how I actually start pulling away from it so that I'm cutting it about a two degrees off plumb. But still the square is staying close there because of the magnet. And that allows me to uh, not damage my baseline and uh, make sure that I'm uh, not leaving any material out there in the middle. Now to keep my chisels very sharp, I found a handy way that I could mount a strop. I glued a piece of leather onto a half inch piece of plywood with a dado. I made a kind of a T structure. What I do is I just leave that in my vise and uh, whenever I want to touch up my chisels, then uh, you know I can do the back side. I, I do a lot more on the back side because you don't want to roll that edge over. Uh, so I actually do most of the time just touching up the back side. But I will set it on the angle and very carefully pull forward. Usually I only have to do five to ten times and I get, uh, get a pretty nice edge back on there as long as I do this regularly. I can keep my chisels sharp. I put a little mirror on a stand. They call this a third eye. I've seen this in some books. You can see it there. It's got a little mirror. It's really handy for seeing the uh, back side of your work. You can see I've got a little material left on that one. Uh, but you can also use it on the front side. Instead of stooping over, you can kind of look down straight from above and get a very accurate idea of how much material you have left uh, to take off. So. There's my little third eye. I made some homemade rasps using some hardwood with some sandpaper on it. Uh, that's the second one that I made. It's got on two sides. This one only has it on one side. Uh, that's for very small spots. But what you can do with this is you can clean up the saw marks on the side of a pin or a tail. Uh, also, if your pin or tail is just a little bit too fat, you can uh, thin it down very gracefully. The layout dovetails. Most people use a ruler or dividers, so I thought I could make some easier way. Here's five different sheets that show different spacing for dovetails. So here's the one where the pins are 33% the size of the tails. If I slide this piece of wood back and forth, I can see an example with six different tails, or maybe that's too many and I only want four different tails or maybe as few as three might work nicely here. So if I lay the thing down on three, I can use my scribe to poke little holes exactly where the lines are at. And these lines are gonna show me where I'm gonna cut the wood to make the tails. I didn't have to measure anything or use dividers. Just put my pencil into the mark slide up and I can draw lines across this uh, this face. Now I just need to bring lines up on the sides of the, uh, the board and mark out the waist and put a baseline. Now I'll be ready to uh, take this to the saw. I also created some software in PowerPoint with Visual Basic to create scale drawings. Let's say I had uh, I want to have three tails with a 10 degree angle 
pins being a third the size of the tails and the half pins being three quarters the size of the pins for this size and thickness of boards. I can show a little model of what this is like and it's uh, the right scale so that I can take it directly onto the boards. If I wanted to compare it to something, let's say I wanted to compare it to having five and maybe uh, a steeper angle on the boards. Oops. Something like that would look different now, wouldn't it? And I could keep going. Um, if I wanted to check, like if I had a smaller profile on the pins, maybe have that only 20% would make it very small on this end. Oops, but my half pins are too small looking. So let's say I wanted them to be uh, 200 and two and a half times bigger. Something like that maybe. Ah, now we're getting to what I want. Something like that. So I could print this out and then uh, take it to the shop. Well, thanks for watching my tips and good luck on your, your dovetail journey. And here's a last look at uh, the best one that I made this week. I put a little Danish oil on there, which made the contrast of the wood show up a little better. None of these joints have uh, sawdust and glue in them. I'm trying to get to the point where that would become unnecessary.